Okay, recording start. This is John Sarver, and uh, you know this is another uh, of the uh, My Solar Story uh, uh, series uh, sponsored by the Great Lakes Renewable Energy Association and Michigan Solar Users Network. And tonight, Pat O'Boyle from uh, a project manager, a manager from Michigan Saves, is going to talk about their financing program uh, and and all the other services they provide that can be used to. Uh, help somebody considering a solar system and also energy efficiency improvements. So uh, uh, Pat, uh, uh, go ahead. All right, my name is Pat O'Boyle. Uh, thanks for having me here tonight. I'm glad to be a part of this. Uh, I, as John mentioned, I'm with Michigan Saves, uh, but also a board member of the GLREA. Uh, Michigan Saves is a nonprofit green bank that serves to make energy efficiency and renewable energy improvements in the state of Michigan. We can only lend in the state of Michigan. The money that we use is actually coming from either credit unions on the residential end or commercial lenders or le commercial lending partners for our commercial or business side. Uh, the money that is, that is lent out is then backed by what we call a loan loss reserve in the case that there's a default. And what that does, it allows to bring down the interest rate to the end user, be it a resident, or uh, we also now do second homes or rental properties on the residential end, or the commercial building or nonprofit house of worship school project we did this morning. Uh, so it, it kind of spans in, in many different, I'm going to totally focus on the residential for this part. But if anybody at the end wants to talk about a business project that they have in mind, uh, please feel free to let me know. Uh, the, the energy efficiency side of things would be air sealing insulation, heating and cooling equipment, geothermal, uh, solar. We've also talked about roofing. Uh, we do some form of roofing. We also do some form of siding, and then we are seeing a lot of window projects. So uh, it's been a really strong year for us, I think, because on the residential end, people are spending so much more time in their homes that they want to make the improvements they've been wanting to make for years. Um, but this is, I quickly roll into what people want to know, which is what are the rates look like? How much is it for? Um, a majority of our projects are probably still HVAC but it's skewed solar, geothermal has been, been strong. And, and as I mentioned, the windows have been something we've seen a lot of. So we have unsecured loans up to $50,000. So an unsecured loan doesn't require a, any home equity pull. It is strictly an unsecured personal loan. Uh, we, we brought these up a few years ago. Our, our ceiling was at $30,000. We then went to 40 and now it's up to $50,000. I should mention though in solar, and especially now that we're seeing batteries more and more, I feel like on a daily basis, if there are two income earners in one household, they could each potentially have a personal unsecured loan through Michigan Saves of up to what they would qualify for. So we've been seeing some larger projects uh, frequently actually here in the recent past. The rates are credit qualified. They do range from 44 to 549 is our standard program. We have some select like Washtenaw. If I don't know if we have anybody from Washtenaw County on, you must uh, live or work in Washtenaw to qualify for their rates, but 4.25% uh, available on a 10 year and 524 on their 15 year loan. Terms are one year per $1,000 on any loan of 5,000, it can qualify for a 10 year term and loans of 15,000 or more can qualify for 15 years, which was definitely brought to us from our solar contractors that wanted to see longer loan terms. Uh, and many times they want to show you that your monthly payment looks a heck of a lot like your utility bill. Uh, we do have six lenders in the state of Michigan in, two that do full statewide, including the UP, and then another lender that does the entire lower peninsula. The other three lenders are regional. All right. This is our current solar portfolio. So this is through, I believe, I want to say 
July or August of 2020. It's on one of my uh, future slides. It just gives you a good look at what the average systems are that are being financed, but also I really like showing that we can do something as low as 1.36 kW and all the way up to 20. It, that's about the most we see on the residential end is 20 kW. Uh, we do see again when they're combined with batteries. The financed amount is, is an interesting one. It has been growing and I don't know if that is just people are doing larger systems currently or if they are doing potentially batteries in conjunction. So it's adding to that cost, but that's been on the rise. Um, it could also be equipment and, and construction costs are coming up. But again, if for you, those of you that are interested, here is our, and this is just our average. This isn't what I can guarantee you from a solar installer. It's a two year average of what you're paying per watt. Uh, and then, but, the, but you'll notice here, the cost per watt range is someone with a big system or got a heck of a deal here and someone didn't shop very well on this 671 project uh, because we, we checked on that and that was just a solar project. So that one was interesting. Here are some numbers for you and I will not read through them, but we are happy to share them. What this basically shows is that this is the averaged finance total that I used from the previous slide. And then at the different credit qualifications that we have available. So at 5% interest rate for 180 months, which is available for Dort Federal Credit Union, we're looking at 177.41 per month. That is pretty much for monthly payments, that's a fantastic deal. If you wanna shorten that term though, your monthly payments change a bit. And then this is for a, the, let's see how you would phrase this, the lowest FICO that would qualify for a term of that long, and I see an error here. This should be a 20, that is wrong. So this is the correct number here. This should be 549 at 120 months. Our residential lenders have also given us the ability to re-amortize your loan one time. So this is a federal tax credit example. If you have, and this is for 2021, is the federal tax credit for solar panels, if you qualify, is 22%. That is the rate that you would receive in federal tax credits. The 17,499 would be your new total. So this is if you re-amortize day one, your payment would have gone from 177, I don't know, I'm sorry, this is for the 549 example, would have gone from 243 to 189 if you applied your federal tax credits. There is no minimum or maximum that you can apply to it. So you could have done 4,000 or you could have done 10,000. There is no minimum or maximum percentage, nor is there a prepayment penalty if you decide to pay off any Michigan Saves loan, be it for a furnace, be it for solar, be it for anything we do, you can prepay your loan off with no penalty at any point throughout the process. And then this is our current portfolio that I just wanted to show. So we've been, we've experienced quite a bit of growth. We've done about $160 million over the last two and a half years. Took eight years to do 100 million and then uh, two and a half to do 160. We have, as John mentioned, we have about 580 residential contractors currently in our program. So I will just, that I wanted to blast through this. I can go forward, backward to any of the slides anybody would like to see, but mainly I like opening it up to questions uh, because I'm here to answer those for you. Yeah, Pat, why don't you stop the screen sharing then you'll be able to see everybody when they raise their hands or unmute themselves. It'd be easier for us to figure out who wants to ask a question. Whatever would like to ask a question, just unmute yourself and go ahead. I, I have a question. Uh, does that, in terms of what that applies to, could that apply to other renewable technologies? I mean, uh, on site wind, um, solar hot water, solar attic fan, solar pool. I mean, what, what, 
Essentially, anything that has an energy star rating will qualify. Anything that has a utility rebate will qualify, which typically those do correlate very well. The key is though, it has to be installed by a Michigan Saves contractor and it needs to be a thousand dollars or more. Okay, thank you. Hey now Pat, uh, isn't the, uh, how would you say typically how this all happens? Uh, somebody finds out about Michigan Saves, they think it's uh, attractive. Uh, do they first go to the financial institution? Do they first uh, talk to contractors? Uh, what kind of, what's the first step that a, an interested person would go to? Thank you for asking that. I probably should have covered that, but I, I forget about that step. Uh, typically what we would do is, as you kind of mentioned earlier, is if you know you have one of these projects or if you're someone that finds out on the first 30 degree day that your furnace went out, the contractor brings it to your attention, says, hey, Charles, you know, we know you're interested in a wind system or hey, your furnace went out and you don't have 7,500 bucks to write me a check. I've got Michigan Saves available to you. It's this nonprofit, they do low interest financing. Here's your quote, if you call this 800 number, 877-867-8522, or go to michigansaves.org forward slash loan center, you can just apply right online right there with my six digit ID. That ID associates you, Charles, to contractor X. If you decide to fire contractor X before you decide to move forward, we can manually move that decision to another Michigan Saves contractor. It's about a five to seven minute process to apply um, and you should have the decision within 10 seconds of that. It does an automated, now everything, we just actually upgraded our technology uh, in September, October, everything is automated. If you're on the fence of being approved, it then kicks to the lender and the lender actually reviews it. But at that point, you're working with a physical Michigan-based lender. They then pay, oh, I'm sorry, they then pay your contractor at the end. And we do charge a 1.99% fee for putting all this together and making the software work. Pat, this is Karen Furio. How long has this group been in existence? 2008 was the beginning of the beginning and the first loan was, and Ms. McCoy might know this question better than I, the first loan I think was either at the end of 2008 or early 2009. Well, thank you. I wish I had known about it. <laughs> yeah, well, so it's, and it's, it's and then I always kind of joke about this. So in the beginning, you know, hey, you know, Randazzo Heating and Cooling, do you want to be the first contractor into the program that we think is going to work? Um, but now, like even today, I had a contractor that lost a job to someone who quoted Michigan Saves, so now they want to sign up. So there was a slow uh, build up. Yeah, it's just it's anything else. You're starting from scratch, you know, and, and now, so once you kind of hit that pivot point, though, it more contractors want to participate and they see the value in in, in providing this, because it's a very low interest, that there isn't many other interest rates you will find for an unsecured loan lower than ours. And many of the other products out there, if you go past the promotional period, it skyrockets to 20 something percent and ours is fixed. Would, would your bank association work with like a condo association? I'm, we're working on one right now. So that would be a commercial lender project. Okay. Um, it be, I, we would be, I'd be happy to put, if you had a project scope, I would be happy to then shop it to lenders for you. Thanks. And Pat, uh, could you talk a little about, uh, you know, uh, contractors that end up in your program, do they get trained? Do you screen them somehow? Uh, uh, what's the process in order to get on your contractor list? Yes, yes, yes. So it, it, we have a checklist we go through, make sure you're in good standing with the state of Michigan on your taxes. Make sure you have the licenses you need to be installing the services in which you wish to sell. 
And then we do a training. We, I mean, you know, pre COVID, it was an in-person training as often as we could do it. And currently it's either a zoom training or we have a recorded training. That was actually another thing we were working on today. Uh, so we train the, the contractors and then we provide support. I mean, that's what my normal day to day is, is providing contractor support. I don't typically deal with the custo the end customer. Um, it, it's, it happens occasionally, uh, and, and, and many times it comes from an event like this if I'm going to help a customer through it. But the contractors are trained. We do ask they do one year, uh, uh, one loan per year to remain active, and that's just so they don't forget of how to explain the program more than anything. Um, they're usually paid within about two to ten business days of your project being complete, uh, which is relatively fast for other products that are out there. Um, we are also working on a way to potentially do a draw system where they, right now it's all the payments at the end, so where they could potentially get half up front as long as you as the customer said it was okay. Um, so we're always looking for improvements. Like I said, we, we never would have had $50,000 15-year loans without listening to our solar contractors. Pat, uh, this is John Gorley. Uh, you almost answered my question talking to Karen, but can you say... <laughs> what the interest rate might be if somebody went through a contractor that didn't that did provide uh, some kind of fund uh, financing but not through michigan saves there yeah i mean i can give you a thousand numbers so it's basically you have to in any of these whether you're buying a car or whether you're buying the furnace finance whatever it is there is there, there's two different ways. There's a, there can be a promotional period where it's 0% for 12, 24 months, then it goes up, or there can be a longer term period that usually, so if, uh, a competitive 10 year term that I know of out there is 9.99 for 10 years. Um, the, the best way to really look at it, to compare ours, is look at each lender, be it in our program or other, typically has an unsecured home improvement product. So whatever that number looks like, that's one of the safest other options to protect you as a consumer in case you, you know, go over the term. But I think probably in the 9% range would be pretty good unless it's one of the promotional ones and, and just make sure you know, one, that you can pay it off in that term or two, what it looks like if you don't. Um, the other thing that occurs potentially is the contractors can actually buy down the interest rate. So if they come with something very low for a long term, they're probably baking that cost into your sale price. So if they're offering you 299 for 10 years, there's not a bank out there that's loaning money for 299 for 10 years. Mm -hmm. They are paying something and they're charging you, which is, I mean, that's a, viable if as long as you know that it's fine thanks i had uh, two questions for you pat um one was whether or not michigan saves has done any work with like on bill financing um Today. And, <laughs> <laughs> and and then the other question is about whether um michigan saves would work with like a non-profit school that's not a public school and other sort of nonprofit entities, what sort of things might work for them? Yep, absolutely. So both of those. So so recently, Michigan Saves has done uh, the on bill for some municipal utilities. Uh, Holland on bill has been in. Uh, probably I think we're on our third year there. Maybe it's three and a half already. Uh, where residents of Holland can finance energy efficiency improvements on their home and they can add solar, but once they've done the energy efficiency improvements uh, on their utility bill and Traverse Light and Power just signed up and we closed our first one at three o'clock today. So the project is complete. It is submitted for payment. It literally, I, it, we got it submitted. It might've been four o'clock, but it was today. Uh, so, and we're definitely looking for some other ones and there's some interest, um, but it's, it's, it, it works really, really well, but it is more labor intensive than a standard unsecured loan. And then nonprofits, absolutely. We basically get it to a commercial lender. 
they review the project scope. Uh, the, the, a big thing on the commercial end, we call it, or business end, which covers that, is what utility rebates you are going to get for the project, because that helps us dictate what interest rate you are given. And it's a long, confusing-ish equation that you as the end user don't have to deal with, but we would deal with your contractor. They know what the utility rebates are if they're a good contractor. That's something on the commercial end you want to ask, like, do you deal with the utility rebates? Because that's free-ish money. Um, but again, it, it's a little extra work, so you, you want to make sure you pick the right contractor if you're going to do a project like that. You assume that the, you have a list of Michigan Save contractors on your website? Absolutely. We have uh, michigansaves.org. And then uh, I believe it's upper right. Well, the website, I don't know if anybody's looked at our website recently, but there is a something new is coming in six days teaser on there. The entire website and brand is being rebranded next Wednesday. So the website you will see today, so I can't tell you exactly where that icon is located, but it simply says, find a contractor. You type in your zip code, contractors can set the service radius that they want to uh, offer their services. Many solar contractors will cover a majority of the state of Michigan, whereas a heating and cooling contractor, you know, 30, 40, 50 miles, depending on where they're based. Um, but yep, everything's listed right there and you can search all or Pick which one you want. Battery storage, we just added. Well, we had, Great, thank you. Had, had related to battery storage, are you starting to see uh, more projects that include batteries? Every single day. We, we, I have one, or we have one contractor that I met with last week that showed me his October sales. He had 24 projects and 21 included batteries. Oh, wow. Of one or more. And as of not this July, but last July, I think we had maybe 10 total program history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's especially with the relative uncertainty of net metering or the certainty that it's not there. I, but there's also a, 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 a supply chain issue with batteries right now, too. They're difficult. In generators, if anybody on here would like to add a Generac generator in the next six months, it's going to be a challenge. Hmm. You no know, battery technology is changing so fast. Does it make sense to wait a little bit on the batteries? I mean, I you know because you know they're they're making some leaps and bounds in capacity and size and so on. What are your thoughts on that? Personally, I would never put in a system that wasn't ready to have batteries added at any point. Um, but I think we're probably at a point where, again, with where we're at with the utilities, if it was straight net metering, I would say, wait. If now with what we're seeing, um, you just have to run the numbers. I mean, it's a strict, it's just, a, and the solar contractors can help you run the number. I mean, that's all to me. That's how I'd make my decision. What do you think, John? Do you think it's we're there yet? Or I mean it's it's right there if we're not there. Well, that's a hard question to answer because it like like he's like you mentioned, things are changing so quickly. Uh I think you you had the uh, uh you put the, made the major point, which is you know, uh you, you gotta look at the numbers and kind of look at your own situation because as 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 uh, Pat, you and I know, you know, DTE now has a very unfavorable uh, rate for outflow uh, that's uh, from a solar system that's put on the grid. But Consumers Energy doesn't have that uh, outflow, outflow rate approved yet. So people with Consumers Energy, they can still get into net metering for uh, 10 years. Uh, so that's a factor. And, and then... Uh, you know, what, what I understand from just listening to people and talking to people about batteries, uh, a lot depends on, uh, you know, do you value the, uh, the security of being able to uh, uh, kind of weather a uh, storm, basically. You lose power, is that battery going to be real valuable to you? To, uh, uh, are you frequently interrupted and maybe interrupted for a long period of time? Uh, 
that, that makes a, a heck of a difference when you kind of look at the extra cost of the battery. So it's, it's a, uh, uh, you, you know, I think any of us who do uh, home projects and get bids, we're always surprised at how, how the big range exists for doing the same work. Well, I think the same is true for solar and solar plus batteries. Uh, you know, you, you, it's interesting. You get uh, three proposals and uh, the, uh, the price range can be significant. I think the statistics you had, Pat, were amazing to me that uh, you had one down at like almost uh, a little under $2 and then another up at $6. And That's a hell of a range. When I did that the first time, I about fell off a chair, and then I immediately looked up with that six dollar one and called the contractor. Right, <laughs> and it was true, right? <laughs> it was a good salesperson. I, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, that gets back to, uh, and this is true for lots of, I guess, projects. You know, if you uh, if somebody kind of uh, approaches you and has this deal, especially supposedly. Uh, you know, kind of a free system, uh, but, but obviously there's no free system. You're going to pay th pay it over time. Uh, and, you know, like you pointed out, Pat, the, the financing can get a little complicated depending on uh, how they're doing it. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, you got to really uh, ask a lot of questions and compare proposals because what, uh, um, you know, it's what may appear to be a good deal may, may not really be a good deal when you especially if you look at the financing aspect of the thing. So this is John Gorley again. Um, I can give an opinion about batteries. Uh, the, uh, the, the way I think about it is that the battery backup substitutes for a, a backup generator. Many people pay thousands of dollars for generators and uh, uh, if you have a battery backup on your solar system, that uh, gives you an uninterruptible uh, electric service, basically. So the question is, how much is that worth to you? If uh, I, and and I'm and I'm estimating that in my case, I'm I'm with DTE, and I got in early enough that I do still have net metering. Uh, but the battery system is still worth it to me because um, it's substituting for what might be a ten thousand uh, dollar generator. And uh, uh, if I take that away from the uh, cost of the solar system, my, my cost per kilowatt is quite small, two and a half or something like that, two, two and a half dollars. How long will, you, will your battery run the basics, not counting air conditioner? Um, a couple of days with nice. no sun at all. And then, and then with a little bit of sun in the wintertime, uh, uh, something we, the, my, my contractor and I worked it out uh, that is probably uh, only like a 10% chance that there's so little sun that I'd run out of battery in the middle of the winter and a long extended power failure. And John, why did, uh, in your, what, what was it about your circumstances? Did, did you have, uh, frequent outages or long outages at times that you really value? Really, really unreliable power. Uh, power failures uh, uh, once every uh, two weeks or a month uh, uh, with, uh, you know, for, for, for short periods of time, you know, five, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, and then, and then extended power failures uh, a couple of times a year that we're, where we're talking about uh, a day or a day or more. Uh, John Terry Richards here. What uh, what battery chemistry are you using? They're lead acid. Okay. It's uh, uh, they work. Uh, the yeah. the system is all is is all Outback and Outback uh, yes. uh, sells these batteries specifically designed for uh, a grid tied uh, system. Thank you. Other questions or comments. So you guys mentioned different technologies and there's something that interests me years ago and I haven't heard about it in a long time. I believe they use it in Germany um, and I don't know the name of it. It's, it's basically a, a replacement for your furnace. It's a, a motor, like a single cylinder or two cylinder something motor that runs off a of natural gas 
and heat your house, but also runs a small generator. Uh, it does like a two uh, two for one deal. Is something like that exist in the states? That'd be like a combined heat and power unit. Right. It, you know, they use the heat from the exhaust and from the engine itself. Yeah, right? there's there there is. Um, it's not common. Um, mm -hmm. There is a small company. I want to say they're based in like Novi that's trying to do some residential units like that. You know, it runs on for natural gas, and from what I understand, the engine can run for 10 years on an oil change. I mean, the, the natural gas is so clean, you know, that, that you really, the maintenance is very, very small. Now, you had to, you'd have to run the thing constant because it's not going to produce, you know, as much heat as, like, your furnace. But, you know, um, like you say, it, it generates energy, you know, electricity as well as heat, you know. So it sounds like a, a neat thing to look into. Yeah, it's, it's it, I think it's CHP, Combined Heat and Power, and, and, and I can't remember okay. the name of that company, um, but they were looking to do some pilots around the Ann Arbor area six months, a year ago. Yeah, I've read about those types of systems uh, more commonly in Japan, uh, but uh, like Pat pointed out, uh, boy, there aren't too many if, if in Michigan if, you know, they're kind of few and far between. And I think the ones that are, are like giant industrial uses. Oh, yeah, right. Hospitals you, or something you, you, like that. You'd be running a thing for six months a year. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, other uh, comments or questions? Okay, we, maybe we can uh, adjourn a little early tonight. And uh, hey, th thank you, Pat. This has been very helpful. Yeah, and, thanks for having uh, me. Uh, you know, I, I hope it's been helpful to uh, the attendees here. Next week, we're going to have uh, Dale Klein talk about his, uh, he started with a net metering system, but then went uh, to an off-grid system. So he's going to talk about both his off-grid system and his, uh, his uh, kind of on-grid system. So he's kind of got a, uh, a dual system that he's going to talk about and how uh, the, the systems kind of developed over time and why he went in that direction. So that'll be uh, next Thursday at seven o'clock. Uh, thank you everybody for coming and uh, hope to see you next Thursday. Thanks again, Pat. Thank you, John. Have a good Thanks. night.